Hello, all my crafty friends. I'm Donna from Mason Creations, etc. Join me for this fun and simple holiday craft and discover how you can make your own beautiful Christmas decor from items you already have at home, such as an empty soup can. I'll guide you step-by-step step through the process. From preparing the tin can to adding your personal touch with paint, glitter, and other embellishments. So if you're ready, let's make a mess. First thing I did was remove the label. This was a can of corn. The glue that held the label on just chipped off easily once it was wet. I washed and dried the can to get it ready for decorating. I'm going to brush on Polyvine's Multi-Surface Lacquer. This is a great primer for any shiny surface such as glass or ceramic. I am using the dead flat finish because I want to remove the shine. This will give paint or decoupage glue a great surface to adhere to. Paint won't chip, scratch, or peel. My crafty friend Kathy F. from Boise requested a tin can decorated for Christmas with clay embellishments and made into a candle. Here you go Kathy, this video is for you. Now I'll let that dry for about an hour before moving on. I'm giving the can a coat of Dixie Belle paint in the color cotton, which is white. This is a great chalk paint, actually my favorite. I love how smoothly it goes on. This and all the products you're going to see me use today came from decoupagenapkins.com, my wonderful sponsors. I'm going to be decoupaging an image on this can so I'm going to need a white background. When decoupaging, always have a light background, such as white or off-white. Any dark colors will show through your image and make it look dark and muddy. This rice paper is so beautiful. It was really hard to decide which image to use. I'm going to separate my image using a water brush. A water brush has a cartridge that you fill with water and then brush it on the napkin or rice paper. The water dispenses easily, so this is really convenient. You can find this in my description box below, in my favorite tools section, just in case you want to check it out. It's always best to tear your rice paper. A torn edge is much easier to blend than a sharp cut edge. I'm also removing any of the white factory edges. I'm spritzing the rice paper with a little bit of water before decoupaging it to the can. The can is corrugated, so I need the paper very pliable to be able to conform to all the grooves. I'm using Polyvine's Decorator's Varnish as my decoupage adhesive today. You can use this product as a varnish and an adhesive. All the Polyvine formulas can double as a decoupage adhesive. It works so much better than the most popular brand of decoupage glue. It's not a glue, so it doesn't go on thick and lumpy. It's a varnish, so it dries crystal clear and will never yellow. I'm using my brush to push the rice paper into all those grooves. Since the paper is wet with water, it'll take a few hours to dry. I'm adding a coat of Polyvine's Heavy Duty Wood Varnish over the image area to protect it. Polyvine has several formulas, and this one is my favorite. It's heavily resistant to heat and moisture, and is also UV resistant and food safe. I'm using the satin finish, which is amazing. The more coats you add, the shinier it gets. After a few coats, the depth of shine is just amazing. And don't let the name fool you, it's great on all surfaces, not just wood. I'm going to let this dry for one hour. I'm going to use some texture paste instead of clay in some molds that have very shallow and delicate designs. It's much easier to remove than clay. I'm spreading it over the mold with a palette knife and scraping off as much off the top as I can. Then I'll let that dry overnight. DecoupageNapkins.com has such a great selection of napkins that you can purchase one at a time. They carry many other craft supplies such as rice paper, paint, clay, molds, and a great selection of polyvine products. 
over 8,000 products and growing. They are wonderful to work with and will send your order out fast. They offer several automatic discounts when checking out. Subscribe to their newsletter by entering your email address and you'll receive 10% off your next order. They are truly your one-stop shop for craft supplies. Make sure you check them out. I'll be leaving links for all the products I use in my description box below. I'm going to paint the remainder of the can with some blue paint that matches the background in the rice paper. I'm sponging on the color light blue first, right up to the rice paper on both sides of the image. I mixed Windsor Blue with a little bit of white paint to lighten it up, but the color was still a little bit off from the background color of the rice paper. I added the tiniest bit of Wild Blueberry and that made the color perfect. I watered it down and now I'm sponging that here and there over top of the light blue. I went back and forth with the two colors until I was happy with the way it looked just like you would when painting ombre. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you are all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. I sponged plain white at the very bottom of the can to look like a layer of snow. In a little bit, I'm going to use a really cool product, no pun intended, that looks just like snow and ice over top of the white areas. I let the paint dry for about 30 minutes. Now I'm adding another coat of heavy duty wood varnish to protect my new paint job on the can. And I'll let that dry for one hour. I'm using Doss clay to make some trees and a reindeer. This is a great clay to use when you'll be gluing your clay pieces while the clay is still wet. I brushed my mold with a little bit of cornstarch so the clay would release easier. Then I added the clay to the mold and sliced off the excess clay with my palette knife. I wet my finger with some water and rubbed around the edges of the design to clean it up a little bit. The reindeer is a little more delicate, so I put him in the freezer for about 20 minutes before unmolding him. It helps with delicate molds. But I still ended up breaking one of his poor little legs. No problem, that can be fixed. Now it's time to glue all these pretty little embellishments to the can. There is a tree branch at the top left corner of the rice paper image that comes from nowhere. So I'm making a tree with some branches that I molded. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And why not share this with a friend? Thanks for doing that. If you'd like to be notified anytime I upload a new video, click the bell. I'm adding some boughs at the top of the can all the way around with some cute little pine cones in the center front. I test all the products that I recommend in my videos. I won't recommend anything that I haven't used myself and prefer. If I'm recommending it, you can bet it's a great product. Each product will be listed in my description box below and will have a blue link to make it easy for you to find. Any of the links I provide are safe for you to click on. Now it's time to glue the trees and reindeer onto the can. The clay is still wet, so it will conform to the shape of the can. And I'm using a craft glue to attach them. Since the can is corrugated, make sure you use a lot of glue. Wipe off any glue that should squeeze out from under your clay. I 
I glued the reindeer on first and now I'm going to glue on that little piece of his leg that broke off. I'm going to use pre-mixed tile grout to fill in the little bit of a crack that you can see. This works so good anytime you need to fix a crack in clay. I put it on with a brush and then smoothed it out with the brush a little damp. And now let's make everything pretty with some paint. The tree branches are getting pentart paint in a light brown. The trees are getting painted pentart country green. Pentart is my favorite paint. I love the way it goes on so smooth. Normally only one coat is ever needed. I'm using the color Hauser Dark Green to shade in the deep areas of the trees. I added a little bit of water to the paint so it would run a little bit in between the little needles. And I'm doing the same colors on the boughs at the top of the can. I'm adding the darker color to just the center and spreading it upwards and downwards with a dry brush. The two pine cones I painted that same light brown as well as the tree trunks. The reindeer gets a coat of light beige called linen. I'm using the color linen to dry brush the pine cones and the brown tree branches. I dry brushed a little bit of the white on the reindeer to highlight his tail, legs, neck, and chest. And now it's time to add some snow. So I'm also dry brushing some white on the edges of the boughs at the top of the can, the pine cones, and all of the trees. To dry brush, you need most of the paint removed from your brush. I'm using a stiff brush, dabbing it in the paint, unloading the paint on the rim of the bottle, and then wiping my brush on a napkin so there is barely any paint on the brush. Then I'm just lightly wiping over the image with the brush. Then I added some brown dry brushing to the reindeer's legs and antlers. Remember all those little snowflakes? I'm going to glue those around the can at the top of the white paint around the bottom of the can. I didn't glue them all at the same exact height. I did them at different levels to look like rolling snowbanks. I put a few of the tiny ones in the sky. Send me a comment and let me know what type of project you would like to see next. I love designing projects around your requests. Just be patient with me though, I get a lot of them. I'll definitely get to yours. Sometimes it just takes me a little while. I love hearing from all of you and look forward to reading all your comments and requests. So keep them coming. Now I'm going to create a snowstorm. Make sure you lay down a lot of paper and move things out of the way because this is messy. I added a little bit of water to some white paint to make it pretty runny. I'm using a fan brush to do this because it's thin and doesn't hold a lot of paint. I'm dipping the brush in the runny paint and then tapping the brush. It sprinkles little white dots all over. Because I gave this a coat of varnish, any mistakes can be wiped right off. I gave the entire can another coat of varnish to protect all the painting I just did. 
I made some antiquing using Pentart paint in the color Platinum and some water to make it runny. I used this to antique the snowflakes. This gave them some depth and definition so you could see the details from the mold. I brushed it on and then wiped it off with a soft dry cloth. When it dried, the platinum paint made everything look really shimmery. I added a couple drops of light brown to my platinum mixture to make it a little darker for the trees and did the same thing, brushed it on and then wiped it off. I also went around the perimeter of all my clay pieces to make them look more 3D and stand up off the can. I'm going to have some great projects coming up. I'll be doing some mixed media, air dry clay, decoupage, and of course more Christmas projects. You'll want to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. I'm going to add Pentart Snow Crystal to all the areas that I painted white to look like snow. When this dries, it sparkles and looks just like snow. I'm just globbing it on with a palette knife and a brush. I want it to be thick like fresh fallen snow. I want it just on the edges of the tree branches, so if any got on the inside, I brushed it off. The can opener I used cuts from the side and doesn't leave a sharp edge. You'll want to make sure you open your can with this type of opener so you don't cut yourself. You can get a manual one fairly cheap. On the bottom of the can, I'm putting it on really thick and going up over the bottoms of the little snowflakes I glued on earlier. And I let this dry overnight. Let me know what type of Christmas ornaments you would like to see this year. What do you see in your mind when you think of Christmas? Angels, Santa, snowmen, or something else? Send me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, now I'm going to turn this into a candle. And it's actually easier than you might think. I got a candle making kit on Amazon that included this cute little burner and pot for melting the wax. It also included literally everything you'll need to make a candle. I'll leave you a link in my description box in case you want to check it out. This is a large can, so I actually had to purchase additional wax. A general rule of thumb is fill your container with wax twice and when melted it should be just about what you need. Soy wax is supposed to be the best for candle making. It burns longer, slower, and cleaner than paraffin wax. It also produces less soot. This little burner gets really hot really fast so I only put it on number three. I'm stirring the wax occasionally. I'm going to heat it up to between 180 and 185 degrees. Just a helpful tip, when your wax is about halfway melted, turn the burner off or your wax will get way too hot and you'll have to wait a really long time for it to cool. Speaking from the voice of experience, while I'm waiting for the wax to get to temperature, I'm going to hot glue the wick in the center of the bottom of the can. I'm using a popsicle stick with a hole in the center to keep the wick straight and in the center of the can. I'm also getting my wax dye ready too. I'm just cutting off a piece of the light green. You don't need much of the dye. I used the spoon to put the piece of dye in the pot. I didn't want the hot wax to splash on me. Once your wax reaches between 180 and 185 degrees, you can add your fragrance. This is the best temperature for the fragrance to bind with the wax. If it's not hot enough, it won't bind, and if it's too hot, the fragrance will evaporate. Make sure you only use oils that are specifically for candles. Other oils may not work properly. The recommended amount of fragrance is around 6 to 10% of your volume. I didn't measure it all, I just poured some in. Call me a rebel. I suggest using an eyedropper instead of pouring. It's a little messy. After adding the fragrance, you need to stir the wax for approximately two minutes. But don't stir it fast, you don't want to cause bubbles. Now let your wax cool to between 140 and 145 degrees. That's the best temperature for pouring the wax. I held a paper towel under the spout while pouring to make sure nothing dripped on the outside of my can. 
I moved the wick out of the way while pouring and then centered it properly. Now let your candle cool and harden for several hours or overnight. I melted just a tiny bit more wax, added a tiny bit of color and a tiny bit of fragrance, and then poured it over top of my cooled candle. I'm going to add a few dried rose petals and I just want them on top, not throughout the entire candle. I adjusted my wick and let the little bit on top cool and harden. Don't forget, all of the wonderful products I'm using today can be found at my favorite place for craft supplies, decoupagenapkins.com. And I'll leave you links in my description box below. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. I'm so happy you were here with me today and thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to see you all next week. I'm working on a new project with you in mind. You can subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner.